Hello friends, today we will deal with the topic mechanical properties of the solids. For studying the mechanical properties of the solids, we should be aware of some elastic constants and that elastic constants are known as E, G, K and Nu. So what are these constants E, G, K and Nu? E is simply, this is the elastic modulus. And G, this is just simply the shear modulus. And K, this is simply bulk modulus. And then nu, this is Poisson's ratio. So these three modulus along this Poisson's ratio are required to specify the property of a material and therefore they are known as the elastic constants and we can study this modulus and Poisson's ratio one by one before that I will make you clear what are the different type of bodies the first type of body they are known as the elastic body and the second type of body they are known as the plastic body and the third type of body they are generally elastomers elastomers and I will explain one by one what's an elastic body, what's a plastic body and what's the elastomers. Suppose we can see an irregular shaped body here. Consider this body can deform under the application of the external force. I am applying an external force of magnitude F. Then what will happen to the body? The body gets deformed by an amount now see this may be the final shape of the body what is exactly happening here whatever amount of external force we are applying to the body that much amount of energy gets stored inside the body while the body getting deformed at the same time there is a restoring force that is developed inside the body which is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction to the applied force so this is the restoring force generated inside a body and this restoring force is always pulling the external force and that's why when we remove the force that is applied externally this body will regain its original shape and dimension so such bodies which can regain its original shape and size after the removal of the external force they are known as the elastic bodies and there are some bodies which cannot regain its original shape and size after the removal of deforming force and that type of bodies are known as the plastic bodies and there are certain other bodies known as elastomers we all know what a rubber band is by applying a small force for stretching we will get a long elongation for a rubber so rubber is a perfect example for the elastomers then can you say some example for the elastic body we all know what a steel is we can easily bend the steel by applying sufficient amount of force. So by absorbing more amount of energy, it can undergo a small deformation as desired. So steel, we can say, is an elastic body. Now, going to the plastic body, we can say mud or clay, they are the best examples. You can make a ball of mud, just press it and release your hands. You will not get the dimensions in the beginning it may be in some other shape that means that mud or clay is the perfect example for the plastic bodies mud clay rags is another example for the plastic bodies okay now we are familiar with elastic plastic and elastomers we can see what is a stress I told you when the force is applied to a deformed body the body gets deformed and the restoring force is generated inside the body. This restoring force generated per unit area is known as the stress and that stress is denoted by a letter sigma. So first we can see what exactly a stress is. Stress, I told you, that is the restoring force generated inside the body divided by area on which it is acting we can take an iron rod here 
Suppose we are applying a tensile force of 5 Newton here. We all know that the body get elongated if we are applying a tensile load. What is a tensile load? If we are applying the force along the axis outward, then the force is a tensile. Now what is a compulsive force? If we are applying the force inverse, then we can say that we are applying a compulsive force. And as a result, we will get a stress and that stress is known as a compulsive stress. Here also, we will get a stress and that stress is known as a tensile stress. And another type of st uh, force is also there. Suppose the body is rigidly fixed at the bottom and we are applying a tangential force to the surface. The surface may get displaced and the side may get sheared. And such type of force are known as the tangential force. So there are three type of forces. First is tensile force, second is compressive force and the third one is tangential force. And now, what I am trying to explain is all about the stress. So we are applying a 5 Newton force here. We all know that a restoring force will generate inside the body which is opposite in direction to the applied force. So the applied force is in that direction so the restoring force will be towards my direction. So here the restoring force will act. This is the restoring force. Consider a small section here. Throughout the whole section the stresses will be equally distributed. So this restoring force, the restoring force for a unit area will be equally distributed. So along the whole length I can say that the stress generated will be equally distributed. And this can be easily explained with the help of the same Venance principle. The same Venance principle says that whatever the whatever kind of forces we are applying, whether it is compressive, tensile or tangential, the internal stresses and new term, internal strain, internal stress and internal strain developed will be equally distributed in the whole section for diameter greater than two or three times. So let's let the diameter is D. The three times diameter is 3D. So a 3D distance consider here, here also. Within this distance, this internal stresses generated will be equally distributed. That is the Saint Venance principle. So the stress generated will be always a scalar quantity. So because the stress is not acting particular towards a particular point but it is equally distributed to some area. So we can say that the stress generated will be always a scalar quantity. Now this is our body that is of length L. Suppose we are applying a 5, kilo, 5 newton force axially outwards. It is easy to understand that the length of the material will increase at the same time the diameter will also change. So there is this change in length indicated by delta L. So what I am trying to explain is strain. So for each and every stress there will be a strain. Strain means the deformation occurring to the body because of the stress or the force we applied. So we can say that there is a strain which is defined as the ratio of change in dimension change in dimension to the original dimension so here the change in dimension delta L divided by the original dimension L so strain is denoted by the letter epsilon epsilon and stress is denoted by the letter sigma so this is sigma the restoring force per unit area and this is strain change in dimension by the original dimension. So if we consider the change in diameter, we can say that the strain developed will be lateral strain. So lateral strain is equal to change in diameter or change in radius whole divided by original diameter or original radius. So we got two types of strain. One is the longitudinal strain, longitudinal strain and our second one is the lateral strain. If we take the ratio of the lateral strain to the longitudinal strain, we will get a new constant that is new. This is new. New. This is called the Poisson's ratio. Poisson's ratio. This defines the property of a material. And this is equal to the lateral strain divided by longitudinal strain. Lateral strain divided by 
longitudinal strain and this value of the Poisson's ratio will vary from minus 1 to 0 0.5 then this minus 1 to 0 0.5 generally we will take the value for the Poisson's ratio as the 0 0.33 and there are some relation between these elastic constants so from that equation we can is we uh, we can easily find out the value for the Poisson's ratio for solving a problem if the value of the Poisson's ratio is not given. Okay. And there is one more characteristics that we have to understand for this Poisson's ratio. This Poisson's ratio value, if the Poisson's ratio value is 1 by 2 or 0 0.5, we can say that this material is perfectly elastic. We are dealing with a perfectly elastic material perfectly elastic material one more thing this material will be incompressible also the value of the poison ratio is 1 by 2 then the material will be incompressible and these are the inference from studying the poison ratio and now we are familiar with the stress strain and poison ratio now we can go to another type of stress known as the shear stress So first thing we studied is stress sigma is equal to F divided by A, restoring force by area. Strain is equal to delta L by L and that's it. And now we have the shear strain. Here we are dealing with the tangential force. Suppose a body is rigidly fixed at the bottom and we are applying a tangential force like this. It's sure that this side gets sheared. So this side gets sheared but the lower face will be stable as it is. Consider the face displaced by a small amount delta x. Let the length of the shear face is L. We can easily define the shear strain as the displacement occurred to the surface divided by the length of the shear face. So the shear strain is indicated by the letter gamma. Shear strain gamma is equal to displacement occurred to the surface divided by the length of the sheared face and now if we, can, we, if we take the angle theta in between this tan theta is equal to opposite side by adjacent side that is delta x divided by L and that is also what gamma shear strain for small values theta is approximately equal to tan theta so theta is equal to gamma is equal to delta x divided by L so this is the equation for finding the shear strain now the shear stress, shear stress this is indicated by the letter tau, T A U tau. This is the tangential force divided by area. Tangential force is acting on this face. So the tangential force FT divided by the area of this face that is simply tau. Now we have the shear strain tau is equal to tangential force divided by area and a gamma is equal to theta is equal to delta x by L and now we can see the three type of modulus we can see the three type of modulus first one is the elastic modulus Elastic modulus E or Y. Elastic modulus E is equal to normal stress by normal strain F by A whole divided by delta L by L for this elongation delta L is equal to F L divided by A E. This equation you have to study by heart for solving the problem history. And the second one is the modulus of rigidity. Modulus of rigidity. And this is expressed by G or C. So this is the ratio of the shear stress to shear strain tau divided by gamma. And the third one is the bulk modulus. Bulk modulus is equal to negative. If the volume is reducing, we can put the value negative. Minus bulk modulus is indicated by letter K. 
k is equal to times delta p divided by delta v by v that is increase of pressure divided by change in volume by original volume this is the equation for bulk modulus consider for easy understanding take a beaker and pour some water into it we have an elastic body outside like the volume is v1 now we are putting this body inside it is we can see that the hydraulic force is acting equally in all phases in perpendicular directions such that the volume may get reduced and the final volume will be v2 change in volume delta v is equal to v1 minus v2 now we can uh, explain the volumetric strain volumetric strain is equal to volumetric strain delta is equal to delta v by v1 that's what here delta v by v and delta p suppose the body is outside it is acted upon by the atmospheric pressure when it is inside the body atmospheric pressure along the hydraulic pressure is acting on the body so there will be an increase of pressure that pressure is indicated by the letter delta p k is equal to minus delta p by delta v by v and next under terms compressibility the inverse of bulk modulus is known as the compressibility the inverse of bulk modulus 1 divided by k is the compressibility and now one another thing is there this is a delta volumetric strain is equal to epsilon x plus epsilon y y plus epsilon is a set epsilon xx plus epsilon yy plus epsilon is a set they are the sum of the normal strains while we study the strain matrix we will uh, learn what what, what, are, what are these quantities and these are known as the cubical dilation cubical dilation delta same as delta v by v so this is all the basic things in the strength of materials and now in the next section we will deal with a tension test uniaxial tension test on a mild steel and these are the basic things that we are studying here okay thank you